until this <laughs>
I reached for it. It was another text from Peggy. You can't hide in there forever, Eleanor. I texted back, my hand moving fast over my keypad. I'll spend the night here, my dear sister, so you're welcome to stay downstairs all night and wait for me. With that, I dropped my phone back into my bag and faced Wesley. He was watching me with interest, like I was a chessboard he wanted to pry apart one piece after the other. I'll be spending the night here. Do you have any problem with it? He smirked, so annoyingly handsome. You intrigue me further and further, Eleanor Lenz. He took one step towards me. That's interesting, too, because I will be spending the night with you. I thought wildly. There's no way that he was. Was he flirting with me? And why was he coming closer? I found myself backtracking with every step he took towards me. Wesley's face was caught to the side, examining me critically. I really didn't like the way he looked at me like that, like he was the master of mind games, and I was just a stubborn piece that didn't want to stay in place. So how do we begin? Begin what? I replied, my voice hitching in my throat. You wanted to spend the night here, and so do I. I wonder what we're going to do about that. His face bent down to mine, his eyes boring into mine. With him so close and his breath on my face, I could see every little pore on his face, and I was sure he could see my fading freckles too. His lips drew nearer and nearer. They were slightly full, but I imagine they knew how to do so many, many things. Gulping, I placed a hand on his chest and pushed him back just before his lips could touch mine. He chuckled, but it was short-lived and followed by another stare. I started to rub my lip, but I stayed my hand so as not to give myself away. You're not my ideal man, Wesley. Stop dreaming. He chuckled, then leaned back on his work desk. I've never had a woman reject me before. I'm not your ideal type of woman idea. You don't know my type, princess. I started to name my sister as his type, but I held my tongue. I was not possibly his type, not at all. I wasn't as skinny as model like Peggy, who skipped meals at end just to look fit. I didn't need to skip meals. My sufferings alone was enough to dissolve my fate. Plus, I wasn't exactly confident in my beauty. You intrigue me, and I'd like to find out exactly why that is. So, what are you implying? I'm ready to hear you, Eleanor. I want to know exactly what we're doing here and what we're talking about. Now was the time. I cleared my throat and went around to his couch, then sat down. Wesley waited for a moment before he stood up and followed, sitting on the far end like he was giving me the space I needed. It was gentlemanly of him, acting that way when the both of us knows that he's just a playboy. I propose that you get married to me. Yes, you already mentioned that. It's not as simple as you think. The Chalama and the Lenz family are business associates, so canceling a wedding is grievous. How about we do a fake one instead? He leaned closer, his eyes twinkling once again with buried excitement and interest. What are you suggesting, Eleanor Lenz? Just call me Eleanor, please. And I'm suggesting that we get married under the guise of love. But we aren't really married. We only have to do this for a year or two, but I will not interfere in your private love life, and you will in out interfere with mine. Ah, uh, is that so? Yes, it's the best offer you can get. I will not cage you with marriage, and our certificate will expire in years to come. We can discuss how long that will take us, but I want us to be together till next year. Next year? Yes, yes. I stood up now, hyped from his continuous interest and enthusiasm. In the future, possibly next year, the stock market is going to take coins very serious. I suggest we both invest in it while growing our business and we that we have more wealth to spare for ourselves, for our separation. Wesley stood up with me, too invested to sit still. You want us to plan money for the future? It's more than that, actually. I'll be giving you the tips to support your business because by then the stock market would be very big on coin exchange, you know? He did not understand, but I continued anyways. You don't have to carry much of the financial burdens. We'll be married under false pretenses, but underneath we're business partners. Now, if you invest a reasonable sum of money with me, O can turn it around with interest. 
You want me to give you money so you can invest in this country business, if so you can give me interest? You're not giving me money. You're investing in me. We're going to be partners now, and after we get what we want, we separate. By then, it will be easy to spill, and none of the family would be affected. What do you think? He stood still and stared straight at me, his eyes boring into mine. I was captivated by his intense stare that I lost myself in the blues of his eyes for a moment. When I looked away and the magic was broken, he smiled. Eleanor, you have come to me with all I've ever wanted. Really, really? Yes. My mother thinks marriage between our family will be a great match, and I have been thinking of ways to escape it until now. There is no escape. If you do not follow my route, I'm afraid you'll have to wed my sister. I clicked my tongue as a thought came to me. Unless you want her. He went to the small wine bar in his office, took out a bottle of red wine and two glasses. No princess, it is you I want. I find you interesting, and I'd like to see what the future holds for us. I was startled by his words. No one had ever found me interesting before. No one. Let us celebrate. To a few years of partnership and marriage. He poured wine into the glasses and passed one to me. I clicked my cup to his, marking the toast. I felt happy and lightheaded as I took a sip. Finally, Peggy's dream man was mine. He wasn't smiling this time. He was back at his desk, writing down a few notes. I was content to just look at him and drink the wine. I imagined how mad she would be now that she didn't have him. You want more? He asked, pointing to my empty glass. I nodded, excited. He kept pouring more for me until my vision was blurry. Then he sat down beside me and touched the ends of my hair. I have a room nearby, if you don't mind. That was the last thing I remembered. I woke up with a start. My neck, back, and legs were sore. I tried to stand up, but then waited a little for my body to boot. Then there was this banging headache in my head that just wouldn't stop. That moved when I moved. Oh God! There was an incoherent reply beside me. I jumped, startled, only to see that it was Wesley. His shirt was opened, exposing his immaculate, hairless chest. As if that couldn't get any worse, there was a lipstick smudge on his shirt by his collarbone. I stiffly reached for my phone, my mind racing. There were series of text messages from both Peggy and Damon. You're really spending the night there. Oh, you bastard! I'm going to wait the whole night here. How dare you, Eleanor? You silly old cargo. I'm going to deal with you so much so that you won't be able to recover from it. Eleanor, I'm downstairs with Peggy. Can you both stop this game you're playing, please? I swiped right and opened the camera, examining my face from there. My lipstick was smudged and faded, like it was kissed, like I had kissed him. I turned slowly to look at Wesley, my cheeks heating up. The empty wine bottle lay on the floor, and my glass still had a residue of wine left. His were empty, and he sat back on the couch, sleeping soundly. I looked down at his trousers; it was loose, like he had hastily worn it. I pushed my hand down to my midriff to feel my panties. It was intact. If it was intact, did he perhaps push it aside and have his way with me? I can't exactly remember what happened, but that's because I had drunk way too much in the face of celebration. Oh God, did I really? I frantically wiped the rest of the smudged lipstick off and tied my hair in a bun. It was a light brown and long, directly under my rib cage. I had cut it in my previous life because then I was married to him and he didn't see anything attractive concerning me. That was a shame, and I'm ever cutting this hair again. I sneaked around Wesley, careful not to make a sound, as I slipped past him and outside his private office. The walk down to the elevator was the walk of shame. I held my head high and walked right past the busy reception, so they won't question me about the room I was in. I got home in less than an hour. Sally was unexpectedly waiting for me at the door, tapping her foot aimlessly. When I walked in, she moved aside to let me pass. This is progress, I thought to myself, heading straight to my room. What I didn't expect was for Sally to grab a handful of hair and draw me back. I yelped in pain, instinctively holding my hair right above where she gripped it. 
She pushed me away and I fell to the floor. My hand bruised when he scraped along with no pressure to hold me down. Peggy told me what you did. How dare you, Eleanor? How dare you do that to your sister? Oh, now she's my sister. I had completely forgotten about Peggy the moment I put down my phone. My whole focus was on Wesley and our night together. If he had touched me or I was just being paranoid. Aren't you going to say anything? Just because my husband is dead doesn't mean I can't punish you as before. I squeezed my mouth shut. There was nothing to say, nothing that would have made the situation better. I took my sister's possible husband and that was it. Sally laughed maniacally, then she grabbed me by my ear. You're so going to regret this, you bastard, spending a night with a man that is not yours. He's not hers either. Sally heard me. She pushed me into my room and gave me a dirty slap. It was so unexpected and so loud that my head swung to the side and my hand slowly made its way to my face to palm the reddened cheek. He's not hers. Is that all you have to say? You whore, stay in here and reflect on your mistakes and see if I'm going to let you live to the next day. I remained on my feet, with my hand on my cheeks. She grunted loudly with frustration, seeing that I have not reacted adversely to her word. If my dear husband Sean was here, he would have punished you in ways far better than anyone can even think. I'll only lock you in here till you realize your mistake. And Eleanor, you can whore however and with whomever you want, but you must marry Damon Messiah, and that is final. With that, she banged the door right in my face, locking me inside. I sat down slowly on the bed, still palming my face. I would hold it this way until the red, harsh color was gone. Sally was frustrated and upset with my behavior that I was sure of. In the past, I was quiet and meek, and I did not argue much with her. The little times I did, they locked me in my room for days on end. My room had become both my prison and my solitude, giving me peace and nightmares at the same time. She was right about her late husband. He punished me in far better ways, starving me for days until I was sure to never repeat that same mistake. The mistakes were minor, breaking a cup, not washing a dish. They punished me for anything minor. Now that I did something big and maddening, Sally was frustrated that she didn't have a better punishment for me. I set my bag aside and reached for my phone, a new idea in my head. I'm sure they would have published news of the both of us by now. I searched an internet for news about Wesley and a daughter from the Lenz family going to a hotel together, but there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing. That's not possible. There should have been something I made sure of that. It's not possible, I thought again. I paid a reporter. He was supposed to have come and be there to carry the news. It should be bursting the internet apart right now, spreading news of the Lenz family's first daughter and the Shalamate family's second son. It would have been a toggle, a real war, unless Wesley had taken the news down. Was that possible? With his influence, it certainly was. He was wealthy enough to remove a small piece of information from the media, or rather, a large one. The Chalamet's family was highly influential and deeply rooted in the country. I'm not entirely sure of Wesley's siblings, or if he even had one, but his reputation preceded him far and wide as a wild playboy who hurt women's feelings for a living. I was about to browse more when my door opened again. There was no time to hide the phone. Sally appeared right back and snatched it off my hand, accompanied by her two hefty guards. You won't be needing this either, she said as she waved the phone in my face. I wanted to protest, to beg, but knowing Sally, she would use that against me and hold it on for much longer than she originally intended. So I kept quiet and watched her leave, then locked the door right after her. Gosh, I'm doomed. I stood up and went to my window. I needed to speak with Wesley. I was already regretting leaving that early. With me gone, he might wake up and trash our earlier plans since I said nothing after it. Besides, why did I have to run away like that? It's not like he would actually touch me, right? But what if I had surrendered myself to him instead? Eleanor, stop thinking of his sexual expertise. I said to myself, 
I bounced to the window and looked down at the school children passing by. It's not like I've seen his body fully naked, so why would my imagination keep going there? I definitely didn't want to sleep with him, I promise. I just wanted to exact my revenge plans, and that was it. A phone rang nearby. My ears perked and my eyes followed the sound. It was one of the school children passing by. She held the phone in the air, looked at the screen, and then rolled her eyes. A wild idea suddenly came to me. I instinctively brought my head out the window and waved my hand frantically. I would have shouted too, but the sound was sure to attract Sally's attention. However, the kids couldn't see me waving, so I had to shout in a hushed tone too. Hey, hey! It took three more tries, but eventually one of them looked at me. I pointed to the one with the phone, still waving my hand before the girl who turned understood what I was saying. She nudged the phone girl, and the other turned to look at me. Your phone, I said in a hushed phone. Lend it to me for a few minutes. What? I said, placing a finger on my lip. Then I beckoned her closer, in which the other students joined her in edging closer to me. They probably found it intriguing that an adult was by the window, hushing them and asking them to come closer. What do you want? The girl asked harshly when she came closer. She was no more than 15 at least, and she didn't even have respect. Anyways, her respect won't get me out of this situation, and I needed her help. I could endure a few insults for this. Can you lend me your phone? I'll give you a dollar for them. A dollar? Okay, but only for a few minutes. Thanking my stars that she actually agreed and gave me the phone, I snatched it off her hand and immediately went to speed dial. At the same time, I went back into my bedroom and searched for a dollar in my bag. Then I passed it to the girl while she waited and chatted with her friends. God, please let this be the right number, I thought as I hastily dialed the number. I'd only seen it once when he gave me that card. I would have been thankful for my retentive memory if I wasn't worried that he wasn't going to pick my calls since it was from an unknown line. However, the universe was on my side. Wesley picked up after the third ring, and my relief was so loud that he must have heard it from his end. This is Eleanor. I said immediately, he picked. There was a short silence, followed by laughter. I couldn't imagine what he was laughing at. Oh, princess, I was beginning to regret meeting you. I froze as cold washed through my body. Regret meeting me? Why is that? For starters, you left before I woke up, and then you didn't call until now. For someone who's eager to marry me, I expected you to reach out as soon as possible. He expected me to be all over him. I was filled with pleasure. He spoke like he was in love with me, like that first meeting had filled him with hope. Who's that? Someone asked in his background. A female voice, older and tired. Wesley laughed and his voice filled the phone. It was a rich sound. I was beginning to like the sound of it. It's just a friend, Mom. The one you met at the coffee shop? The blind date? Oh, Mom, don't be silly. And then into the phone, he said, My parents have been asking me how our date went. Perhaps you want to tell them that we progressed to my hotel room? I blushed, unable to keep still. Please don't tell me they're listening to you spill rubbish. Oh, but they are? I'm simply telling them that you were exquisite yesterday. I enjoyed spending time with you, don't you? Why, I may have fallen in love with you already. My blush spread to the roots of my hair. I knew he could be lying, perhaps entertaining them even, but I couldn't stop the small hope that flared in my chest. Can you come pick me up then? Since the date with you went splendid, we might just have another date, yes? Fine, another date it is. Expect me soon at the Lens Villa. I was still smiling. The phone held to my ear when the door burst open. Sally stood before me.